The last time the Volkswagen Polo GTI appeared on RPM, it was part of our performance shootout, where it lost to the Ford Fiesta ST. But in the Polo's defense, the Fiesta ST beat everything that day, including some more expensive and more powerful machinery. Now, we have the new GTI, with more power, more driving tools, and a better chance of being the best car in its class. From a driving point of view, the good news is that the Polo GTI will once again be available with the option of a manual transmission. A manual transmission in a car like this is always a good idea because it makes you a bigger part of the experience. But in the Polo's case, it gives you something more than that. Because of its design, it also gives you 70 newton meters more torque. Now we don't have that in our test car. We've got the 7-speed DSG with 250 Newton meters and 141 kilowatts from the 1800 turbo that replaces the old 1400 turbo. And even though you get more power in the manual version, the performance figures for either version of the Polo GTI are identical. 0 to 100 takes 6.7 seconds and top speed is 236 kilometers an hour. Another option not fitted to our test car is the Sport Select suspension, which, just like in its big brother, the Golf GTI, firms up the Polo's ride setup and steering at the push of a button for those occasions where you have a racetrack at your disposal. The question is, if you have a racetrack at your disposal, can you have as much fun with less power and no adjustable dampers? Is the basic Polo GTI package good enough to deliver real enjoyment given half a chance? And the short answer is yes. The new motor may be bigger in size, but it's also lighter. Combine that with the extra power and the effortless delivery, and it becomes very obvious very early on that this car is a proper little performer. You may lose a little power with the DSG gearbox, but you gain instant satisfying paddle shifting gear changes with throttle blips every time you gear down. Every GTI features a sport setting for the ESP, which loosens up the electronic controls and allows a little bit more involvement, but not at the expense of your underpants, because every GTI also features XDS Plus, which is an electronic diff that acts on both axles to help with cornering. It's not infallible. As long as ESP is switched on to some degree at least, it will intervene noticeably if you push the car too hard. That limit is just in the right place though, allowing you to make use of the Polo GTI's power without having it cut by the electronics before you feel like you're actually going along at a decent pace. But now you're probably thinking there's hardly a GTI in the country that'll ever reach a racetrack, so what's the point of lapping Midval while talking about it? And that is a very good point, but I do think that the GTI is a very balanced little thing, and you can enjoy its performance on an everyday basis without the fear that you're going to kill yourself. You do have to endure a harder than normal ride setup and an engine that can be a bit thirsty, but for me, those are perfectly acceptable trade-offs. Adding balance to the performance is the packaging of this car. It doesn't scream boy racer, it's not a shouty, obnoxious little upstart. It is a very nicely put together machine with the kind of attention to detail and well thought out design that makes it worth the extra money. It features the standard GTI bits, including the obligatory red stripe on the grille and the red brake calipers hiding behind some fantastic 17-inch wheels. But it also has a few things you wouldn't necessarily expect to find at this price. Things like LED headlights as an option, a tyre pressure monitor system as standard, and a very refined interior. Again, the GTI theme is carried through with the sport steering wheel and the all red stitching, but there's also a definite air of sophistication that sets it apart from its competition. A touchscreen infotainment system, heated seats, cruise control, rear park distance control, all things designed to make sure the daily drive isn't just about traffic like drag races and scaring your neighbors, but about a comfortable ride that has a real ease of use. The materials are great, the build quality is top notch, the whole setup really is spot on. All of that though comes at a price. The GTI is 50 grand more expensive than the Fiesta ST, and the GTI is also not as much fun to drive. But I do think that it's not trying to be the best performance hatch. It's a little bit more grown up than that. It has better kit and a more refined attitude, and for me, 
it is absolutely worth the money. VW has ditched the 1400 TSI in favor of a bigger, more powerful 1800 turbo. The power delivery is linear, and although the manual gearbox allows for more torque, the performance figures are identical to the DSG. A harder ride and slightly thirsty motor are the only real concerns in the Polo GTI. Yes, it's more expensive than any of its competition, but it does offer more in the way of refinement and everyday enjoyment. 